Captain This video is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. This may come as a surprise, but it's actually been a decent amount of time since I've talked about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's been a little bit since the release of Spider-Man Far From Home, but the MCU still feels like it's in the shadow of the movie that came before it, Avengers Endgame. Spider-Man aside, there seems to be a lot of questions about how successfully Marvel can function in a post-Endgame world, to the point where I even see a lot of people say that to them, Endgame is where the MCU ends, and that there's just no reason to keep following it afterwards. And that's pretty interesting to me because I feel like you didn't really start seeing that until recently. The MCU was always building to something, always holding out the promise of this big confrontation with Thanos. But now that that's done, Will its audience shrink? I'm going to try to dig into that this week, but feel free to leave your opinion in the comments below. Energize Spider-Man, the motorized web. It pulls, it lifts, the spider light to climb at night. So my knee-jerk reaction to is Endgame the peak and basically the end of the MCU was like, of course not. It's a universe that, while not without its extreme ups and downs, has been running for decades and decades. But, of course, film and comics are extremely different mediums, and there's a big difference between having a line of successful comic books and being, like, the biggest film series in the world. I don't think anything can maintain being incredibly popular forever, even if the MCU has proved that it has some pretty amazing staying power. I mean, even the comics, on a smaller scale, have had incredible sales successes as well as going through some really tough periods like when Marvel filed for bankruptcy in the late 90s. It's hard to picture a behemoth like Disney ever being in that position, but that doesn't mean the MCU movies couldn't see a significant drop-off. The biggest issues the movies face that the comics don't is pretty simple. Actors. Captain America can never opt out of being drawn into another superhero story, but Chris Evans can and already did. Most actors, no matter how well the job pays, will want to move on and eventually explore other roles. Marvel's contracts have been almost network TV-level commitments, six movies, years and years of work. But at the end of the day, actors are going to leave. And if it's a character that's made a huge lasting impression, like Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man or Chris Hemsworth as Thor, it is basically guaranteed that a recasting isn't going to go over very well. People will point to Don Cheadle taking over as War Machine, or Mark Ruffalo taking up the Hulk as proof that it can be done within the MCU. But there's a huge difference between recasting a role that people know from one film, and a character that an actor has been associated with for more than a decade. So for now at least, I don't think there's going to be a new Steve Rogers or Tony Stark. Instead, Marvel is doing probably the smartest thing they could do in the situation. Positioning more recently introduced characters like Black Panther, Doctor Strange, and Captain Marvel as the faces of the Avengers moving forward. And I think there's a decent chance this will work just fine. After all, these movies, and especially Black Panther, did great at the box office. And there's plenty of characters in the Marvel movies that audiences have embraced and could keep people coming back for more. Still, I totally understand the argument that the core of the MCU was Tony Stark. That performance is what everything else in these films were kind of built off of. Even the tone and dialogue of the first Iron Man is what basically set the template of what an MCU movie is. Spider-Man will always be Marvel's flagship character in my eyes, but Iron Man is what made the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I can see why people are predicting doom and gloom now that he's gone. And I will definitely agree that no matter what, this is the end of a very distinct era for Marvel. The Infinity Saga branding isn't just hype, because I think people really will come to distinctly think about everything that comes after Endgame as something different, a uh, part two. And not just because they defeated Thanos and Tony left. That's a huge part of it, but also because this is the beginning of where Disney Plus comes into things. I'm here to make waves, Mandarin! Iron Man, War Machine, Hydro Armor, Iron Man, and action figures, each sold separately. Kevin Feige and company have been hyping up the new Marvel TV shows for a long time now, and the huge impact that they'll have on the MCU going forward. And if that actually is true, I do think the MCU will never quite be the same. Marvel has had plenty of TV shows claiming some connection to its universe, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to the Netflix stuff to even a show on Freeform. 
but they've always felt a little stapled on. A B-team afterthought that the movies themselves didn't really care about, even if the show itself was good. From the sound of it, that won't be the case with the Disney Plus stuff at all, as Marvel is banking on them being seen as just as essential as any of the movies. I think this is actually a really risky bet, and could eventually lead to the MCU being seen as a bit more niche than it is now. It's one thing to ask casual fans to watch a few films a year to be able to fully understand Avengers Infinity War or something, but 10 hours of a TV show seems like a much bigger ask. And if the plot of Avengers 5 hinges on information or characters from like Loki or WandaVision, I can see that being really alienating to a lot of people who just want to turn up and see some fun superhero action. Still, I bet there's a fairly massive chunk of people who went into Endgame not having seen Ant-Man and the Wasp or Captain Marvel or whatever, and enjoying themselves just fine. At the end of the day though, if you want a wide audience, these films need to be at least understandable to people who don't keep up with every installment, especially when that installment is an entire season of television. Ultimately though, when all is said and done, everything comes down to quality. Right now, their slate of upcoming movies and TV shows feel pretty all over the map to me, with some that I'm pretty excited about and others a lot less so. But if they're good, and especially if newcomers like The Eternals are able to connect with audiences as much as Guardians of the Galaxy did back in 2014, I think it's safe to say that the MCU will be just fine. But if the TV shows start coming out and they're boring and uninspired, and Black Widow and the Eternals land with a thud, it could raise some pretty serious questions about if the MCU's best days are behind it. Iron Man is tricked by the Mole Man into a transparent metal cylinder, which is stronger than tempered steel. Honestly, as you can probably tell from this channel, like, I don't think I've exactly made a big secret of it, the Marvel character that I care about first and foremost will always be Spider-Man. And as long as Tom Holland is doing his thing and playing the character, I can't see ever totally checking out on the MCU, but at the same time, I do get where people are coming from when they say they just don't have as much interest in the franchise now that some of its most compelling leads are gone. I just hope they start experimenting more and more, trying weird and unique approaches to these projects, and hopefully just keeping things fresh. One thing that I should definitely mention though is that they have X-Men and Fantastic Four just kind of waiting in the wings right now. That's a card that Marvel has up their sleeves, and while they seem to be letting them lie right now, I'm sure they're planning to bring them into the MCU in a big way eventually. So am I counting Marvel out? I mean, definitely not. I think they'll continue to generate huge hits for years. But will they ever reach the heights of Endgame again in terms of cultural significance? Maybe not, but if the movies and shows are good enough, I think I'm basically fine with that. But if you're still worried about the potential downfall of the MCU, maybe you could find a slightly bigger downfall to focus on instead. In The Twilight of Civilizations, historians take a look at what caused the implosions of some famous empires throughout history. I love the Egypt one especially because it was just packed with information that I never knew. And that's just the tip of the iceberg on Curiosity Stream where you'll find docs on science, history, tech, and a lot more. That's the place to go to for documentaries. By signing up for their annual membership, you'll also get Nebula, a streaming service made by independent creators like Just Right, Lindsay Ellis, Tirzu, and me. The library on there is always growing, and it's a way for YouTubers to create original stuff outside of YouTube itself. So you can support a lot of indie creators and get tons of high quality documentaries just by signing up for their annual membership, only $19.99 for the entire year. So get access to that and a free trial by going to curiositystream.com slash Captain Midnight, which you'll find in the description and pinned comment below. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 Flight Patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started, because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.